this has an amazing story, this guitar. It was a, it's an LTD Viper 301, which they don't make anymore. This is the P94. This is the pickup that's been pulled out, and I got the fan grill on there. <laughs> Just, I don't know why. Um, this headstock has been snapped a couple of times and, and repaired, um, which is why I use these things instead of SGs, because you don't want to break the headstock on an SG. That would suck. But it's this, a lot of people think this is a paint job, but it's not a paint job. It's actually stickers. It's uh, I I was getting ready to play on Jay Leno with Rob Zombie, and I had just gotten my ESP endorsement, and they were taking forever. They're taking forever to get me my guitars, and then I called a guy up and I go, Hey man, when are my guitars coming? And he goes, Well, there's gonna be a little while. And I go, Well, on April first, I'm playing on Jay Leno with Rob Zombie. Uh, maybe I could have one by then. Jay Leno. That's national television. They'll be ready tomorrow, <laughs> right? So, but they couldn't have. They didn't have the color that I wanted, and it was a really ugly brown. So, and at the same time, um, Freedom Industries is a is a shirt company in California, and they were giving me all these shirts, and they gave me all these white stickers with black art, and I just covered it in white stickers with black art, and even on the back, which is funny, because people are like, how can you play with stickers on the back? But only real men can do that. <laughs> So that's the history of this guitar. Yeah, it looks rad. Yeah, it's uh, it's my favorite axe. And I have another one exactly like this, with but it's got a P94, and instead of the fan grill, it's got a Wolverine figurine in there. And it's black stickers with white art. So that's the that's the negative of this. But uh, these these are my favorite live guitars. Amazing. Are you a guitar collector, or are you just... Um... I started. <laughs> yeah? How many guitars do you have now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should. Um, the thing with uh, I, I actually bought my first. Um, I actually bought my first nineteen, my first vintage guitar this year. No, last year. It's a nineteen sixty seven um, SG Junior, and uh, and it, it, it did to me what I tell everybody that's buying a new guitar, what they should look for. And it's because they go, hey man, when you buy when you play Strats, do you prefer a maple neck or a rosewood fingerboard? Um, do you like Les Pauls or SGs? Should I get a three three five? What should I get? What should I get? And I'm like, you know what? If you don't know, just play a whole bunch of guitars. The guitar will tell you. The guitar will say, yo, dude, I'm the one. Take me home. <laughs> and that's what happened with the SG Junior. And um, because I, I, I always wanted a white one with the small pick guard. And this one guy had three of those, and I played them all, and I was like, mm hmm, they're all right. He goes, maybe you should try the bat wing. Because it's, it's like the cherry with the bat wing pick guard with one P90 in it. And I picked it up, and that's what it said. It, was, it just grabbed my heart and said, you're taking me home. <laughs> and I had to buy it. Um, I got a really good deal on it, too, because the guy was a fan of the Fred of Americana videos. Um, I uh, I also have, uh, I love Les Pauls. My favorite are the, you know, 58, 59s because they have the fat neck. Obviously can't afford, I don't want to spend $400,000 on a, a guitar, so um, I have a historic, a 58 historic Les Paul that was built in 97. That is amazing. I take it to all my sessions. I also have a VOS uh, SG, three pickup, white, custom. That's also amazing. Um, I have... Uh, an 82 Tele that's not vintage in any way. I don't think anything before, you know, anything before, after 70s is really vintage. Well, I guess it is now, because it is 2010, right? So, um, an 82 Tele, Tele uh, American Standard, it's got a 22nd fret, which I like. And uh, I have a Strat. You know, the, ba the basic uh, four food groups when you go to do a session, you need a Strat, a Tele, a Les Paul, an SG, a 335, um, a junior. But the funny thing is, is I go to the, all these sessions and these engineers are like, you know, I'm pulling out the, the Les Paul, I'm pulling out the telly, and they're like, you brought the sticker guitar, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I did. Great, we love that thing. Because it just sounds amazing, you know? And it's 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 funny how um, uh, I feel lucky because I do the Fred at Americana videos and I don't work at the store. A lot of some kids think I, I'm this guy that works at a music store. I don't work at the store. I just show up like once every six to eight weeks and shoot some videos. But our agreement is I get paid for a session, 
Plus, they lend me guitars if I need for a, a session. Uh, so, like, uh, in the right behind that curtain there, I have a you know fifty six gold top with P nineties, and I have a sixty eight uh, ES three thirty with P nineties, and right behind you, I have a sixty eight Tele with a factory Bixby. Oh. So, which is actually isn't a Bixby, but it's Fender's version of the Bixby. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then if somebody says, hey, can you come and do the session next week? Definitely bring a three thirty five. I will go to Fred at Americana, and I have like. 50 to choose from <laughs> so um i do that so it's really awesome you know and it's kind of cool because i don't have a 12 string electric and uh um, oh i actually do have another i have a 60s gagliano it's an italian hoffner and um it's a 12 string hollow body huge but it it actually um i string it as a six and if you there's a lot of, if you listen to the first Daughtry record, uh, when did that come out? I don't know, five years ago? 95, maybe maybe 90, 96? The first Daughtry record, that Gagliano, anytime you heard magical arpeggio or a magical harmonic part or anything like that, it was the Gagliano. And that thing is amazing. And it's funny because it's very rare. A lot of people, you can't find... That's another rare piece. I walk in with my Tone Master and my Gagliano, and people are like, man, that's great. Where can I get one? You can't! <laughs> so it's, it's pretty awesome. I have a challenge for you. Are you up for a challenge? Are you serious? Yes, I do. I am. Okay, you're serious. Okay, what's the challenge? All right. I'm going to... I brought my strat one of my Stratocasters. It's a left-handed one. Okay. And I was wondering if you can try to play it backwards. Okay. Let's, let's set up a little amp so we can hear what's going on. Okay, so All we'll right. be... We'll be right back. So we're back with Felix. Felix is trying out one of my left hand Stratocaster. All right, um, <laughs> because how's the lighting? Oh, hey, I keep turning down the volume. I mean the tone. Upside down because this is left handed. <laughs> I should take a picture with uh, my left handed thing. Now. <laughs> How did Hendrix play uh -huh. like this without turning the tone knob down, man? Like, yeah, I know. I can't even. 
I can't even do anything without touching these knobs. Actually, this one only has two. Normally, it would oh, have no. three. It would yeah. have three. I kept turning it down. And actually, he put his strap thing here so we can go all the way down here. Mm -hmm. Like it would be there. Yeah. So it wouldn't interfere. But man, how did he do it? The guy was genius. Thanks for letting me try this, man. Yeah, really. no problem. All right, Phil, I know you have a lot of things to do. Yeah, well, thanks for coming over, Patrick. Thanks for inviting Prague, me. buddy. Yes. Prague, I'm yeah. going to come and visit you. You'll be my guest. Awesome. We're yeah. going gonna, to we're gonna get me a gig out there with the drills, and we're going to stay, we're going to crash at your pad. Yep, 100%. <laughs> Done. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>